Welcome Tech Divas to Tech Diva Success. We are on fire with more success tips for you. And it's not just things to listen to, but it's things to apply because we all know it takes action to make it happen. And today we've got Josie Haynes. She's an engineering leader. I uh, really feel connected to her for a lot of work that she does. She does large scale consumer technology and has experience at companies that you may have heard of like Apple, Zynga, American Express and Tile most recently for over 20 years. She's currently the Senior Director of Platform and Web Engineering, as well as Head of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at Tile, where there's great things happening in both those areas. As she creates and manages a five-person Windows team that's based in Vancouver and leads all the engineering efforts that take Tile into partner ecosystems. If you haven't heard of Tile, then you might have lost your information. You need to find it. So look up Tile. <laughs> and uh, check out their awesome technologies, which includes even Google Home being able to directly ring and locate tiles, as well as partnering with Intel and HP uh, to make um, them behave as tiles with no additional hardware. So she manages a team. She knows what it takes. And we met at a Women TechNet event where she was speaking and I kept running into her and I knew I needed to get her on the show and she's going to drop some of those tips. Again, if you put into play, you can get 1% better. So welcome, Josie. Oh, it's so nice to be here. Thank you. Yes, thanks. And I know you have uh, prepared a few things for us today, so I'm not going to get in the way and let you kind of take over and share with our tech divas things that have worked yeah. for you and uh, things yeah, you recommend. So Awesome. So I've got three tips I wanted to share today. So first is build your network. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're just getting into the tech industry, like just start. Um, networking is how you're going to get jobs in as you go up in your career. I have not, I mean, I interviewed for my Apple job, but I, that was through a networking connection that I actually got the interview. I didn't interview for my tile job pretty much because I've known the VP of engineering there for 15 years. Um, and, you know, it's every job opportunity that has pretty much come my way and has been successful has usually been through networking, not applying directly to jobs. And so, uh, the, so first I'll help you with your job search, but it's also, you know, as you keep going up in your career as a woman in tech, it gets lonely at the top, right? I am the only female director of engineering um, at my company, and you you need a network to succeed, and you need other women you can go talk to about the challenges you're facing. You know how how did is was it okay that that partner said that in the meeting to me, right? You know. Sometimes you want to talk to another woman about things that go on on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's not also about just finding one person to network with. I, I tell people, find a personal board of directors. Uh, you know, find somebody who's a mentor, who you really look up to. You know, find somebody who will tell you what's what in the loving way you need to help you grow, but we'll tell you, hey, you messed up and you need to do this better, right? You need the cheerleader, right? You need the person who like, if you're down is gonna pick you up, right? And there's, there's so many different people you might need in your life and one person or two people can't fulfill all of those different roles. So I really encourage you to take the time to reflect on who are the people who you might want in your network and being active about growing it. Um, and it's, you know, like many of the tips I will give, it's about taking action. And so I have a spreadsheet in Notion that I literally check every week during my weekly planning. And it shows me the last time I talked to people and it reminds me to go network with people that I haven't networked with in a while. And it, and I'm, I have a horrible time remembering to keep in touch with people. And so I just started this as a way to remind me and it's been really helpful. <laughs> and I also find I do it twofold personal board of directors for my success, which is more of a personal connection 
um, women who've done jobs I've had, uh, allies mm -hmm. who are at the top that, that I want to be able to influence and like bring my ideas to. But then also the professional side in that project-based. So if I'm leading a project in um, you know, a partner division, then I want a sales counterpart. I want, a, I want the diverse personal board of directors to make my projects successful. So I like, mm -hmm. and I visualize it as well. Like when you talk about a spreadsheet, I like to have like a slide. I manage a lot of my goals and stuff just in basic slides because it's visual. And I have like the row for people that are personal. And that way you can also see who they are and challenge yourself on the diversity of that. Because as we work to be introspective on how we're, um, thinking with a diverse lens. I think when I look at it and say, okay, do I have equal men and women? Do I want more men? Do I want more women? Do I have someone who thinks different than me, especially for the work projects where you're trying to solve those problems where you can go to them for totally different ideas. So that was great. I love that one. What else do you have for us, Josie? Yeah. So I th the second one I think is especially so important with what's going on right now with the pandemic. And it is focusing on self-care and introspection. And you can't take care, you know, when you're an engineering leader, you have a team that you need to, you feel responsible for it. But guess what? You can't take care of them if you're not taking care of yourself. And and if your team sees you working crazy hours and not taking care of yourself, they're going to expect that that's what you want them to be doing as well. And, you know, I tell people, take the time to reflect on why you're spending so much time doing the things you're doing. Why are you feeling so burnt out, you know? And take time to meditate, you know, go for a walk, take breaks during your day. But really, you know, and especially now that it's, you know, the end of the year, I really tell people, take the time to reflect. What, what are your goals? Like, what, what do you want to achieve? And, you know, is there some imposter syndrome maybe coming up? Is there a confidence gap coming up? You know, this actually is tied a little bit to the first tip, but one of the reasons I actually like networking, especially with people, you know, who are in higher up roles than me is the confidence gap part of it is sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I want to be a VP of engineering someday. And I have this idea that, oh my God, every VP of engineering is amazing. They must be so much better than me and all of these things. And then, you know, I talk to these people and it's like, they're humans. Some of them, I actually know a lot more about tech than they do, right? And it, it just makes me realize like, it's just a role with a title and maybe part of it and is, you know, is it more of a confidence thing than anything else, right? And so, you know, take the time right now to be introspective. What is it that's keeping you from growing? And, you know, even though that's an uncomfortable thing to try to dig into, like, what, what can you challenge yourself in that area, which will make you a better leader? Oh, I love what you said about taking care of yourself or you can't take care of other people. Uh, it's true for me as a mom, I realize that, but I think in work, it's true like that too. You have to take care of yourself so that you could be giving your best leadership, your best team work to the team. So I love that one. And what's your best and final tip for us, Josie? Oh yeah, so this is my favorite one. I think also is really important with everything going on. And it's about building resilience and having a willingness to admit our mistakes and be brave and not perfect. Um, that, that is actually, Brave Not Perfect is the title of one of my favorite books that I like to recommend a lot of women read. It's by Rishma Shajani, the CEO of Girls Who Code. And it's about how, as girls, we're raised to be perfect. There's this great example in the book um, where there's a study and they get a number of uh, kids, I think they're around eight years old, and they have a room of girls and a room of boys, and they give them lemon, lemonade. 
and the researchers tell the girls and boys this lemonade is great have some and we'll come back and talk in a minute so they leave and the girls and boys start drinking their lemonade well what they didn't tell them is the lemonade was salty the boys immediately like spit it up and were like ew gross none of the boys drank it the girls sat there and drank drink it didn't say a word when they were asked why they said oh we didn't want to make the researchers feel bad and tell them that their lemonade didn't taste good and you know it just shows like that girl then in her first meeting at her first job how does she speak up how, how does she say hey that that thing isn't doesn't look like it's gonna work out right and so you know, I encourage, you know, all the moms to take a moment and think about this, you know, as you're raising your daughters, how can you encourage them to be brave and not perfect? Wow. <laughs> it was worth a pause. I mean, we all have to be brave and we all have to be imperfect yep. uh, to find it. We were talking before this and we were talking about that quote, you know, a quitter never wins and a winner never quits. That's because you're brave. That's because yep. you don't give up. You're resilient. Um, and so important now with the pandemic, all of these are, I feel like everything's amplified uh, because of the pandemic, but especially that one, right? About being brave, speaking up, doing it in a way that um, is respectful but also allows you to have your voice. And that's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And did you have any other last quotes or favorite? Uh, you know, we'll definitely share the book. Did you have anything else to share before we leave? Um, you know, I think the I encourage everyone, you know, to just take some time, like I said earlier, reflect, you know, if, if you're blessed, like, a lot of us are in the tech industry to potentially have a few days off this week really take some time to be grateful right a lot of us you know are able to work from home you know yes there might have been a lot of challenges this year but we might we're most likely in a lot better place than you know essential workers or you know nurses going in and dealing with this and doctors dealing with this stuff every day and so you know i tell everyone take some time to be grateful for the things that went well this year right and you know the little things and take the time to celebrate those wins um and use that and go forward that way because that's the positivity we need to build that resilience to keep going forward. Absolutely. And it's going to take this for us to keep going because mm -hmm. the pandemic is hard on everyone, no matter who you are, to your point. And we have to keep going. Otherwise, we're going to lose even more women in technology, yeah. which has lit a fire in me. And I'm sure you as well, as you're speaking about it and representing it for your company, the importance of keeping women in tech hang in there. Hang in there. We know it's hard. I, it's hard. I'm sure even though you may see someone, you know, and not understand what they're going through, we're all going through something here and mm -hmm. hang in there. You can do it. We need your ideas. We need technology to solve some of these problems so that we can maintain our sanity. <laughs> we need innovative solutions yeah. now more than ever uh, to get through this, not just for, uh, not just for our sanity, but also for our health. And that's going to be a main opportunity as well. So. Oh, so we don't end up in a diversity recession, right? Right now, one in four women are considering leaving the workforce. And if you look at moms, that's one in three. And so if that actually happens, we're going to actually end up going backwards in like the struggles of diversity that we've made so far. And so it's so important to keep women in tech. Yes, it is. And that's part of our mission. I'm double downing this year. So let's do it together and reach our goals together, whether it's uh, writing a book or, uh, you know, uh, creating new communities and the great work that we do. So thank you so much. And if people want to get a hold of you, I'm assuming LinkedIn, but where's the best way to do that? 
Yeah, so the best place is on LinkedIn, or they can feel free to email me at Josie, J-O-S-S-I-E, at Starbug, S-T-A-R-B-U-G, dot O-R-G. Great. Thank you so much, Josie. I know people might reach out to you because you are so great, and I appreciate what you do to keep doing this, too, taking time out of your day to inspire women much like we've been inspired um, to be where we're at. And I think that's part of it. And I really appreciate you. And I think these were great tips on networking and self-care and resilience. So hang in there and um, let's see what we could do together. Thanks so much, Josie. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye.